Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Short, the Personalized Learning Professor, and we're talking about the AAA framework for data-driven instruction. So add a vowel to your favorite support group and grab a small cylindrical battery, because this episode is powering up. In the last episode, I talked about PAL data, the kind of data that we can use to drive instruction or to create personalized learning. In this episode, I want to talk about the process of gathering, analyzing, and using that data. This is based on a framework from the book that I wrote with Drs. Graham, Borup, and Archambault in 2019. That book is and and available to you in the description below. Without further ado, let's talk about the AAA framework. The AAA framework stands for Ask, Analyze, and Act. Let's talk about each one of these steps individually. Step one, Ask. We always want to begin with some kind of question to guide our data analysis. This could be a question that we ask before we gather data, um, such as how are my students doing uh, on a specific learning objective? It could also be a question that we ask after we already have data, such as data from last year's state tests, Questions such as, are my students on grade level? How many of my students are behind? How many of my students are ahead? Additionally, if we know which questions to ask, it can tell us which kind of PAL data we need. If you're not sure what I mean by PAL data, go back and watch episode three. If we already have data, say from a Lexile test or an end of year uh, state test, then we can ask questions of that data to help us know where we need to go next. Questions can range from interpreting data for a single student to a small group of students to an entire class. These questions are important to knowing what the next steps are for us as an instructor and for our class or individual learners. Once we have that data gathered and we know what questions we're asking, we can move on to step two. Step two, analyze. Step two is to analyze the data for patterns or trends that can help us answer the questions we've asked. If the data is not helping you answer the questions you're asking, then you might need a different type of PAL data. For example, maybe the performance data looks clear, but you really don't understand why students aren't getting it. Activity data or learner profile data could help fill us in in some of those gaps. Maybe when students took the test, they were tired or hungry or sad because they had just broken up with their girlfriend. Any kind of data that we can get to help us tell the full story will be important to answering the questions we've asked. Possible patterns to look for can include both performance patterns, such as scores going up or down, and activity patterns, such as students spending more or less time on assessments or having to use more attempts to pass a quiz. We can also use learner profile data to help us understand whether or not students' interests are changing over time. Do they still have the same favorite sports and foods that they did at the beginning of the year, or have those interests changed? Are they maybe seeking or thinking about a different career path than they were at the beginning of the year? Patterns can emerge at the individual, group, or class level, and it's important to look at all of these different levels of data to see the ways in which we might need to change or personalize our instruction. We can also look at data for our instructional materials. Maybe the data is going to tell us that our test that we thought we created really well just isn't working the way we intended. Maybe some of the questions are too tricky or some of the questions are too easy. Another way that we might use data to look at our instructional materials is activity data. Are students choosing the same activities in a playlist more than others? And if so, why? Is it because one of the activities is really easy or really enjoyable? And if it's really valuable, maybe we make it available and ask everyone to do it. Once we understand the patterns or trends that we can get to answer our questions, it's time to move on to step three. Step three, act. Once we have established what it is we're asking of the data, and we've analyzed that data for patterns to answer those questions, it's time to act on it. It's time to use that data to inform our instructional practice, whether it is personalizing the path for students or the pace or allowing students to create their own learning goals based on the patterns we've seen. Again, these actions can differ based on individual students, small groups, or the whole class. 
So it's important for us to think about what is the best way to improve our students' learning or learning experience. Is it to work with them individually and offer them some kind of change in the instruction? Or is it to go back as a class and maybe review some of the materials that we've looked at before? We might also consider using the patterns that we see in data to set up small groups. Would it be better to have homogenous groups or heterogeneous groups? Are the groups going to be working with the teacher or with each other? Are they going to be working with the technology or are they going to be working on paper? Uh, these kinds of decisions can be informed by the patterns and trends that we saw by analyzing our data. Lastly, by looking at the patterns we see in our instructional materials, we might choose to throw out an assessment or use a different form of assessment or change a test question. We might choose to make a specific activity optional for some learners and required for others. Ultimately, we need to understand the different types of PAL data available to us, the questions we can ask of that data, the types of data we need based on our questions, the ways to analyze the trends and patterns that we get from that data, and then we need to learn how to act on it. And by asking, analyzing, and acting, we can use data to drive our instruction, personalize learning for our learners, and help them become better learners who are more engaged. That is it for this episode. As always, if this video was helpful to you, please help me out with the algorithms by liking, subscribing, sharing it with others, and commenting down below. I'm Dr. Short, the personalized learning professor asking you to look for positive possibilities.